All right, this will be the review for monomial and exponents uh, that I gave you in class yesterday. We're going to zip through most of these, so kind of if you could follow along as quickly as you can. Some of these are very, very, very simple. Here's number one, x squared times x to the fifth. We know that when we have these same bases, x and x, we look at the exponents and we add the exponents together. So final answer, x to the seventh. Number two, moving along. How about this? So we have number two as a to the fourth, all to the third power. We have a base with an exponent to an exponent. So it's, it looks like nothing like number one. So we know that when we have an exponent to an exponent, we multiply the exponents together. This is all going to give me a to the twelfth. Number three, we have a quotient of p to the fifth over p to the third. Again, same base as p and p, but we have exponents on top of each other in a quotient, and I know that exponents, when you have that, will be p to the 5 minus 3. We subtract the exponents, so that will give you p squared. And there's your final answer, p squared. 4, we have x to the 4th y squared all to the 5th which basically means I take the exponent on the outside and I distribute it over to both exponents, very similar to this one up here where we're multiplying because we have a power to a power. So that is going to become x to the 20th, y to the 10th. And there's our final answer there. <clears throat> All right, new slide. Make a clean slate here. Uh, let's look at number five. 5 is just one fraction, a over b, all to the third. Again, same idea. We're taking that exponent and we're distributing it to both letters. So this is quite simply, change my color, a to the third, b to the third. Straightforward. Number 6. Now we've got exponents. What is that? s to the fourth over t to the third, all to the fifth. Same idea, you're going to take that exponent, distribute to both exponents, and that's going to give me s to the 20th, sorry about the pen, t to the 15th. You can still see it. Change colors. 7, ooh, hard one, 4,986, all to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is 1. There's your answer. It could be 7 million to the 0 power, and it will still be 1. 8. You got x, here we go with negative exponents, x to the negative 2 over y to the negative 4, which basically is negative exponents change the, the, uh, the place where your base and exponent are. So y to the negative 4th pulls the y up top, which makes it a positive exponent. Same, similar for x at negative 2 up top, that goes to the bottom. So I have x squared, and it gets rid of the negative exponent. There's nothing more I can do here. If this was... Uh, if this was an x to the fourth, let's say something like that over x squared, I could further simplify it uh, a little bit better, but not the case in this case. So move on. We are looking at 9. What do we got? 5x squared y to the third all to the second power. Here we go, the dis that distributive idea. We're going to take the second power, go to the 5, go to the x, and then go to the y. So this ends up being... 5 squared x to the 4th y, and again, I'm multiplying y to the 6th, which equals 25 x to the 4th y to the 6th. There's my final answer there. Any Anytime you get a chance to do uh, numbers and you can, you can actually expand the numbers out, you, I want you to go ahead and do that. So here's 10. 10 is 4x on the outside with a 5x cubed on the inside, all squared. So let me spread this out. This is going to, I'll keep the 4x out times, I take the 2, and I'm multiplying it distributively to the 5. Uh, so inside, well, let me, inside the parentheses here, I've got 5 squared. Oops, let me back up here. That's my eraser. Let's erase that while I'm at it. Get a cleaner, cleaner parenthesis times 
5 squared x to the multiply 2 times 3, 6. So all this is going to become 4x times 25x to the 6, which is going to give me 4 times 25 is 100. x, let me go back to the white here, x times x to the 6. Here we go with the same bases. So I add exponents. That's going to give me x to the 7th. There's my answer there. 11. Get more technical. 4n to the 3rd times 2n times 5n. Again, there are no powers to powers, so I'm basically adding the exponents all the way across. But I still have to multiply my numbers. So I have 4 times 2 is 8 times 5 is 40. 3n, 4, 3n's here, 1n here, 1n here gives me 5n's in all. n to the 5th. Oops. Here we go with 12. Fraction, 27, x to the third, y to the fifth, all over, 18, x to the fourth, y squared. All right, so I'm going to separate these. 27, we'll keep the numbers out, and then we'll have x third over x four, and then y five over y two. So 27 over 18, I can take a 9 into both of those. Uh, again, factoring these things out. So 27 divided by 9 is 3 over 2. And then x to the 3rd over x to the 4th. You could do the subtraction if you want. You would get 3 minus 4, uh, which is negative 1. But the way I've always done this is I look at the fraction as a whole, and I say, okay, if there's 3 x's above and 4 below, how many cancel out? Three on each cancel out, so I'm left with one x in the bottom. So I throw that in there. I look at this one. I got five y's, two, three, four, five over two. Two cancel. I'm left with three above, and there's my answer right there. Okay, but again, I stress, you can take this minus this, and you would get negative one, which would be an x to the negative one on the top. If I move it over, you're still left with an x in the bottom. That's a tough one. Moving on, what do we got here? 13. 13 gives me A, B to the second, C all squared over A to the third, B, C squared all to the third. So here we go with that distributive exponent out here. I'm going to distribute that over every one of them, multiplying if I need to. So now I have a squared, b to the fourth, c squared, all over, a to the ninth, uh, b to the third, c to the sixth, which all breaks down. I get a2, a9, so I'm going to be left with a7 in the bottom. I get a b4 up top and a b3, which leaves me a b up top. And then my c's are going to be c to the fourth down below. And again, that, that's just canceling. 2 minus 6 is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. 2 minus 9 is, that's actually negative 7 and negative 4, but that's why they're in the bottom. There's my answer. 14. Hopefully I have enough on this slide here. Oh, this one's easy. Negative 8, A, to the negative 2. So negative 8 to the negative 2 power is 1 over negative 8 squared. A to the negative 2 power is 1 over A squared. So all i got to do is figure out what the negative 8 squared is, and this is going to give me 1 over 64A squared. That's my answer. The last most technical one in terms of factoring, 15. I'm going to have a whole bunch of stuff here. 9AB to the negative second power, negative 3 a to the negative third, b to the negative one. So what I'm going to do here is go through and just change all of my negatives to positive exponents. I'm going to leave my 9 over negative 3. Um, I've got a over a to the negative third, and then b negative 2 over b negative 1. So I'm going to rewrite these, 9 over negative 3. I'm going to switch all of the negatives over. So I've got a to the negative 3 in the bottom, but I have just an a at the top. 
So basically, if I pull the a to the, neg the negative 3 to the top, it's going to be a times a to the third, which gives me a to the fourth on the top. Let's throw a 1 under there just to keep my place. And then I got a b to the negative 2 and a b to the negative 1. So I'm going to flip that so the b to the 1 goes up top and the b to the 2 goes to the bottom. I know all of this. I cancel. Uh, this is going to be 1 over b. So now when I put this and this and this together, here's what it looks like. I have 9a to the 4th over negative 3b. And I got one more step. 9 and 3, I can reduce. So I've got... I can divide both by 3, so I have 3a to the 4th over negative b. There's my answer. That's a hard one. Multiplying poly polynomials. Here's number uh, 16. 2y squared. This is uh, straightforward. 3y squared plus 2y minus 1. You're just basically distributing the 2y to each piece and then seeing if I can combine like terms. So I got... 6y to the 4th, uh, what is that, plus 4y to the 3rd, minus 2y squared. And then I look and see, is there anything I can, I got a y to the 4th, I have a y to the 3rd, and a y squared. That's it. Nothing to combine common. So that is my final answer. 17. Rounding it up here. Simple foil, x minus 3. Anytime you have two binomials multiplied together, you use this idea of foil which is first, x, 2x gives me 3x, outer, negative 3, negative 6 gives me minus 18, inner, negative 3, and 2x gives me minus 6x, and last, oh, I did last first, oh, let me back up here, sorry about that, <laughs> don't know how to spell foil, so first was 3x and 2x, Outers, sorry, are x and 6, which gives me plus 6x. This is a squared, by the way. x times 2x is 3x squared. Plus 6x inners is minus 6x. And then lasts 3 and 6. Now, there we go, 18. A little tricky on this one because I look now at my, uh, to see what my common pieces are. Combining like terms, I see a 6x and a minus 6x. So that actually, in this particular case, cancels. So I'm left with the answer of 3x squared plus 18. There's my answer. Uh, 18. Another one just like it, except now we have numbers in front. 2x minus 1, 4x minus 2. First is 2x and 4x gives me 8x squared. That's first. Outers are 2x and negative 2, which gives me minus 4x. Inners are minus 1 and 4x, which gives me minus 4x. Lasts are minus 1 and minus 2, which gives me positive 2. Combine like terms in the middle, 8x squared, this and this will give me minus 8x plus 2. Answer. There you go, 19. Whew, 19. 2x. Minus 1, all times 4x to the second power, minus 3x plus 6. So this one, I've just got to make sure I take the 2x and I multiply by the first, the second, and the third. And let's see what that looks like. 2x times 4x squared, 8x to the third. 2x times minus 3x is minus 6x squared. 2x times 6 is 12x. Second step, I'm going to take the negative 1 and multiply by each one. Bang, bang, bang. So that's going to give me minus 4x squared plus 3x plus, oh, not plus, I'm going to do a minus there because that's negative 1 times 6 gives me a minus 6. Make sure I get that right. Yep. Combine like terms, x cubes, there's none. I have a six, minus 6x six squared and a minus 4x squared. And then I have a uh, plus 12x and a 3x. So I've got final answer, 8x third minus 6x squared minus 4x squared is minus 10x squared. Plus 12 plus 3 is plus 15x's. And then my final number, minus 6. 
done. Number 20. Simple multiplication. 3x plus 5 squ squared. So if I break that out, I'm going to say this is 3x plus 5 times 3x plus 5. And then I can FOIL on this as well. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. Uh, 3x times 5 is 15x. 5 times 3x is another 15x. And then 5 times 5 is 25. I notice that 15x and 15x are like, so I'm going to put those together. And this is what I end up with. 9x squared plus 30x plus 25. Okay, now some of you, once you figure all this out, you, should, you can go straight to this idea once you look at this special product right here. But for the most part, I would say if you still foil out, you're all good to go. Last one. 21. 4x plus 2. 4x minus 2. Let's see what happens here when we boil. First, 4x and 4x gives me 16x squared outer. 4x negative 2 gives me minus 8x. We've already seen an example of this. Inner plus 2 times 4x is plus 8x. And then positive 2 and negative 2 is negative 4. This is the one that, that I was talking about we've seen before. If you look at the middle, negative x, negative 8, plus 8 cancels out. So I'm left with 16x squared minus 4. Here's your answer. Good luck.